Hello and welcome. Today is 5th of December 2020 and this is CBSC Class 10 Daily Math video. Today we are going to find out how can we solve these types of problems. So here we are given different rational numbers. Each one of them is a rational number and the question is like this. Does the decimal expansion terminate? We should have written here, does the decimal expansion, so when we actually carry out the long division, will the decimal expansion terminate? That's the first part of the question. And second is, if so, if they do, can we tell after how many places? So let's go ahead and find out how do we answer these questions. Now keep in mind, if you do see these questions in your board exam, these questions will typically carry only one mark. So we need to learn the right technique of how do we go ahead and solve these problems. And secondly, we have to remember and apply them appropriately in the exam. So let's answer the first part, whether the decimal expansion will terminate or not. So here we have a rational number x, which is expressed in the form of p by q, such that p and q are co-prime. Now what is a co-prime? Co-prime is simply, so let's write 2 by 3, it's a rational number. Does 2, the number 2 and 3, do they share any common factor? Answer is no. So we said they are co-prime. However, let's take a look at the number 10 divided by 18. Are these co-prime? They are not co-prime because we can write 10 as 2 times 5. And we can write the number 18 as 2 times 9. So there is a common factor 2 that we can eliminate. If we do that, then we are left with 5 by 9. Is 5 by 9 co-prime? Yes, it is. So this was not a co-prime. This is co-prime. This is co-prime because now they don't share any common factor. So in order for us to say whether the decimal expansion will terminate or not, we want to make sure that we are able to express the rational number as p by q, where p, q are co-prime, they do not share any common factor. And if that is the case, and the denominator q, not the numerator, but the denominator q, if that can be expressed as 2 to the power m times 5 to the power n, where m and n are non negative integers. If this happens, then decimal expansion will absolutely terminate. So we have to keep it keep it in mind. And if you're interested, let me know in the comments below and I'll explain the reasoning behind why this is the way it is. So now let's go ahead. Now that we understand this, let's go ahead and solve the problems. So here are our five problems. So let's take a look at the first one. So here the numerator, we see that it ends with the number 8, so it's an even number, so we can write this as 2 times something. And denominator is basically 5 times 5. So clearly the denominator, remember we are trying to find out q equals 2 to the power m times 5 to the power n. If we can express in this form, we know decimal expansion will terminate. So here clearly the denominator is in this form. So you may be wondering, there is nothing going on with the 2. Remember, m and n are non-negative. They can be 0, meaning m or n can have 0 as a, as a valid value. So they can be any of these numbers, right? So here, we can just think of it this way that there is 2 power 0. So this one will terminate. Let's move on to the second question. So here, looking at this question, let's focus on the denominator. We can write it as 3 times 4. And here, we are writing the number as the way it is. Now, at this point, you may be tempted to say, oh, well, let's wait. We have a 3. So there is no 3 here. That means you may be tempted to say this will not terminate. But before you do that, remember the co-prime part. So can this number, the numerator, can this be expressed as 3 times something? So let's quickly apply the divisibility test of this. So what is the divisibility test for 3? If we add the digits, let's add them. So 5 plus 3, 8 plus 1, 9. 
So if we add the digit and if that is divisible by 3, that means this entire number is divisible by 3, which means that we can write this as 3 times something. It is not important right now what this is. And denominator is 3 times 4. And now we can get rid of this common factor. Now we have denominator, which is only 2 to the power 2, which is of this form. Because we can think of this denominator as like this. Right? We can think of this as this. So this is the decimal expansion of this will terminate. What about the next question here? Let's write it over here. So the denominator is of the form 2 to the power 5 because 32 can be written as 4 times 8. And this is 2 to the power 2. And this is 2 to the power. So this is 2 to the power 2. This is 2 to the power. I should have written this as, uh, let's just clear this up a little bit. So this will be 2 to the power 3. Or which will add up to 2 to the power 5. And the numerator will be something. So clearly, we know it will terminate because the denominator is in this form. What about this question here? Now this question, so denominator here, it is five squared because 25 is that. Then we have three and then we have the number two. And we have a seven in the numerator. Now this number is obviously very critical. Why is that? Because we have to get rid of this three. And that can only happen if the numerator, we can write this as three times something. So applying the divisibility test, we see that it is 8 plus 2 is 10 plus 9, 19. And we know 19 is not divisible by 3. This actually will not divide. So meaning we will get some remainder, right? So we will not be able to write this, not be able to write this as 9, as 3 times something. So we say that this actually will not terminate. It will not terminate. So if you actually do this division using a calculator or long division, you will notice this, this division will not terminate. Let's take a look at the last one here. So what about this one? So again, we have a three. So can we just simply say it will not terminate? Let's take a quick look. So here we have five squared times three times two, and we have seven times. So applying the divisibility test here, we see that it is nine plus two is nine plus two is 11 plus one, 12. This indeed will actually, we can write it like this. And if you are curious what this number is, if you divide this by 3, it will be 3 times 4 is 12 and 3, right? Again, it is not important. It's a one mark question. So 3 and 3 cancel out. So we are left with in the numerator this. But if you just have to say simply it will or will not terminate, the answer is it will terminate. All right, now let's move on to the second part. Now that we know if it terminates, the question is after how many decimal places? So here we have the same situation what we discussed. So Q is our, I, I should say X is our rational number. P and Q are co-prime. And if Q is expressed in the form 2 power N times 5 power N, where M, N are non-negative integers. We know then they will terminate. Now, for after how many places? That simply depends on the value of m and n. If m is greater, if m is greater than n, it will terminate after m places. Else, it will terminate after n places. Or quite simply, whichever the value which is greater, it will terminate after that many places. So let's quickly go back and see what we have just done. So here, the first one, we recognize the denominator, we have 5 power 2, and the numerator is 2 power so 2 times something, right? Now, this does not have 5, the numerator does not have 5 as a factor, right? Because it ends, remember, this ends with an even number. In order for this to be a factor of 5, it needs to end with 5 or 0. So that means that 5 squared will stay as it is. So this decimal expansion will terminate after two decimal places. So that is how easily we can just, by looking at it, we can tell. So after two decimal places, this will terminate. What about this here? So we have seen that we can write this as 3 times 4, which is 2 squared, and the numerator, because this 
applying the divisibility test for 3, we know that we can write this as uh, 3 times, so here we need to have 4, it will be 12 and then it will be this. So 3 and 3 will cancel out and now these two are co-prime. So here the power of the 2 is raised to 2, so this again will terminate after 2 decimal places. 2 decimal places because it depends on what this value is, what this value is. Now what about this question here? So we have established that the denominator is 2 to the power 5. So can we say then it will terminate after 5 decimal places? Not so fast because let's see in the numerator what do we have. So we can express this as, let's apply the divisibility test for 4 and see if this is divisible by 4. We know that if the last two digits are divisible by 4 taken together then it can be divided by 4. So here indeed this can be divided by 4. So let's write this as 4 times. So we will get 6. 4 times 6 is 24. And then we will get 4 times 2 is 8 and 4 times 1. So the numerator we have, now 4 is nothing but 2 square times 6 21 and denominator is 2 to the power 5. Or we can write this as now 6 21 divided by 2. So uh, this 2 will come down and it will be 5 minus 3 or power 5 minus 2 it will be 3, 2 to the power 3. Now this is an odd number so this will not have 2 as a common factor so the decimal expansion of this will terminate after 3 decimal places. We have established that this is not, this expansion will not terminate, right? Let's take a look at the last one here. So this we can write this as, now this we can, we can actually express this as three times something because applying the divisibility test, we see this is divisible by three. So it will be three times, three times four, and then three times four is 12, and this will be three. And now denominator is five squared times three times two. So the three and three will cancel out. And we are left with in the numerator 43 times 7. Denominator we have 5 squared times 2, which is raised to power 1. So now this example shows the decimal expansion will it terminate after two places or after one place? Which is greater? Of course, 2 is greater. So this decimal expansion will terminate after two decimal places. So this is how we answer such problems and if you get these questions in your board exams, this is how very promptly you have to answer these type of problems.